Good evening, everyone. It's Lady B. And as always, I have something to say. I want to first of all thank everyone who's been sharing and liking and everyone who has subscribed. Please keep that up. Help me get this message out that God has put on my heart. Second thing I would like to say is happy Thanksgiving. I could, I have my sweet potatoes in the oven right now and I can smell them. They smell good, but I don't eat them. I definitely are not going to eat baked sweet potatoes. Now, I like um, candy yams and, and that type of thing. You know, I can get, I can eat that, but I don't like sweet potato pie and all that kind of stuff. I make them. I hear I make good ones, but I don't like to eat them. But I smell them and they smell good. What are you going to be cooking um, this year? I pray that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving, regardless of who you're going to be able to spend it with. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. If I could stay in the bed all day, I would do that too. That's how much gratitude I have. I don't need a whole lot of food. And so we're going to be talking about that on today. Just this, we're going to talk about our mindset. I want to talk a little bit about my pastor's message from yesterday and just really share some things that God has put on my heart. So can we pray? Lord, we love you. We bless you. We thank you. You said in your word, Psalms 119, 130, that the interest of your word giveth light and it gives understanding to the simple. And we acknowledge, God, that we are simple. We don't understand your word unless you give us understanding. So speak to us on today. We bless you and we thank you in your matchless name. Amen. The Lord has been dealing with me about the fact that we aren't really ready for the coming trouble. And I know I keep saying the coming trouble, but it's it's like a lady um, that that's in uh, labor or she hasn't quite gotten the labor yet. And she's having those Braxton Hicks contractions. And I know some people would say as bad as things have gotten, it's got to be more than the Braxton Hicks. But Jesus said to the Jews when they were going to begin be going through tribulation um, in Matthew, as hard as it was, he was saying that was just the beginning of trouble. So things aren't going to get worse. And God is, is trying to warn us of some things. Sunday, my husband, my pastor, Pastor David Prunson, he preached a message from Ephesians chapter 3. And he took it a little differently than even I would have if I was teaching or preaching it. But the more I meditated on it, I understood what he was saying. If you look at Ephesians chapter 3 and Paul was talking, he said, verse 13, Ephesians 3, 13. Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. So Paul was saying, even though I'm in prison and I'm going through, you know, I, we don't know. He may have been whipped or whatever. He was saying, it's all for your benefit. And so then he goes into verse 14 and he said, because I don't want you to faint, faint, because I want you to be able to endure, I'm praying. And he starts off, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his power in the inner man. Look at what Paul is praying. Now, Pastor preached about living outside the wire, and he said, outside of the wire is outside of base camp where you are on you are in enemy territory and as believers until we get home with our lord we are in enemy territory we are living outside the wire now i gotta be honest with you pastor's message was a little rough on yesterday it was man it was cutting slicing and dicing it was rough i was squeezed up in my little corner against the wall so nobody could see me because i heard the lord even though the lord's been saying to me that that, that we're not ready i mean as he began to preach i saw even more so how i need to tighten up some things because if i'm a soldier if i know i'm in a war if i know i'm living outside the wire i have not made it to base camp and so i'm in enemy territory i'm subject to be shot sliced i'm, I'm subject to step on a landmine i have to be 
careful. And so he prays for them that God would grant you that you be strengthened, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love. You know, we love to talk about the love of God, but we're really missing it. It's that love of God that anchors us, that roots us, that grounds us so that because we are going to encounter the enemy, going to say it again, we are in enemy territory. And you turn to your neighbor and say, I'm in enemy territory. This world is not my home and the people of this world, they are not my friends. And like pastor said on yesterday, we're spending too much time trying to be like the world, be friends with the world, be understood by the world, be accepted with the world, be comfortable with the world, however you want to say it. And we are trying to be friends with the enemy. So let me finish this out. He says, I want you to be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. When we know God is for us, not just he's for us because he's going to get me a car and get me a house, that even when the enemy my enemy, your enemy, because we belong to Jesus Christ. When the enemy is coming against us, that love of God, it, it, it constrains us. It holds us together. It keeps our mind from being depressed and oppressed and sad and all this other kind of stuff that we go through. People of God, we got to stop wasting the love of God. We wasting the love of God. Can't no man love us? And when I say man, I'm not talking about gender. I'm talking about humankind. No man can love us, be as committed to us. No man, excuse me, I thought I had some water out here. Oh, I do. Something hit my throat. Mm. Thank you for waiting. No man, no man. Your mama can't, you know, I have children. I love my children. I, I, although they all grown, and like my husband said, they, they crusty and when they cough, they cough up dust. But I love my children. I love my children and I see them like those little babies that I carry. I know they're adults. And sometimes I have to remind myself, that's an adult, that's a man, that's a woman, but those are my babies. But nobody, even me, God loves my children more than I could ever love them. And so Paul is praying, I want you to, to grasp the love that God has for you so that you will be strengthened, so you can straighten up your back and hold your head up and stop walking down and stop looking sad and stop being pitiful because of this love of God that is so deep and so great. Not only did he send his son, but he sent the Holy Spirit of God to indwell us, to carry us along this journey. Now, let's finish this out. Verses 20 and 21 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Oh, Holy Ghost. You know, they didn't say with the T. It was Holy Ghost. And we've gotten real Holy Spirit. But when I came up, it was Holy Ghost. That this, this Holy Ghost that's working in us, that keeps us, that builds us up, that strengthens us, not for us to, here we go, be bucking and jumping around. But then when we come down, we can't endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No, ma'am, now unto him that's able to keep your mind. Now unto him that's able to keep your heart. Now unto him that's able to warn you of the landmine. Show you every landmine. Landmine of depression. Landmine of oppression. Landmines of sickness and disease and destruction of your family and, and, and your relationships, your ministry. Now unto him he is able. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we would ask or think. Now we're asking for the wrong things. 
That's what James tells us. We're asking amiss. We're asking to consume things upon ourselves. But when we ask, as Jesus said in John 15, when we ask according to the will of God, the answer is always yes. God never says no to his will. He will say no to our will, but he never says no to his will. So not unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. So whatever it is you're struggling with, if you're still struggling, you haven't tapped into the one who's working through you. See, we're sitting back waiting for the Lord to do it. Stop it. Let the Holy Ghost rise up in you and do what God has called you to, to do. And then look at how Paul praises God. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. God wants to get some glory out of us. We're the church. We're the body of Christ. Last scripture I want to use. Listen, I know I told you all, all of this goes with this end times that we're in these end times. Jesus said men's hearts will faint. The enemy is attacking our minds. Y'all come on. We got to get this mind together. Get your mind. Get your mind. Get your mind. When I was coming up, they would say, get your mind on Jesus. We don't have a time. Oh, get your mind on Jesus. Y'all don't know that, right? Get your mind on Jesus. See? Get your mind on Jesus. Get your mind on Jesus. Get your mind. See? That's that Pentecost to me. Get your mind on Jesus. Get it. Get on Jesus. Get it off of you. Get it off what you see. Get it off your boss. Get it off your husband. Get it off your children. Get it off your finances. Get your mind on Jesus. They would say, we're going to have a time, but we are going to have a time. You know why? Because when I get my mind on Jesus, the praises start coming out. When I get my mind on Jesus, I start saying, thank you. I start saying, hallelujah. I start saying, bless God. Instead of look at how things are going for me. Nothing's going right. This is so hard. If this is so bad, I'm so alone. Whatever. Y'all know what we do. Look at my hair. Look at my skin. All these complaints. Oh. I can't even get it out. We are so self-consumed. I'm too short. I'm too fat. I'm too tall. I'm too skinny. Nose too wide. Nose too flat. Behind flat. Behind too bulbous. I'm hair nappy. Hair long. I mean, you know, whatever it is. Hair blonde. Not blind. We just, come on, y'all. Stop. Get your mind on Jesus. Now look at this scripture right here. The writer of the proverb says, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the hand of of the fowler. Now, let me tell you something. We're talking about two things here. First of all, this right here, stop letting it get you in trouble. Stop coming into agreement with the, the enemy. Stop coming into contracts with people that are against your God. Remember, we're not at base camp, as my husband said. We're living outside the wire. That means we are in enemy territory. And anybody that is not a believer of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you now, their master is not your friend. Their master is not your friend. And because their master is not your friend, they are prone to be your enemy. Now, I, the Bible says that we got to go share the gospel. So I'm not saying go live in an igloo or in, in a cave somewhere. But y'all, stop, stop, stop. Remember whose side you're on. He said, if you've opened your mouth and, 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 and you've co-signed on something, you shouldn't have. Now, let me tell y'all something. We co-signing with the enemy. When the enemy says, look at here, you're not going to ever be anything. You sure is right. Your life is so hard. You sure is right. You're going to be broke for the rest of your life. You sure is right. You will never be anointed like so-and-so. You sure is right. You're going to forever be addicted. You sure is right. We're coming into agreement 
<laughs> we are co-signing. That's what this is, a surety. We have co-signed. We have said, I'm going to make sure this happens. If you don't fulfill it, I'm going to fulfill it. So enemy, even though you might be lying, I'm going to make sure this comes back. Do you know the psychologists call it self-fulfilled prophecy? Why would you make, it, make, make, make an agreement with the enemy? The one, you are in enemy territory. How can you be fearfully and wonderfully made? That's what the commander said at base. And then you get out in the enemy territory and say, oh, no, I'm not fearfully and wonderfully made. At base camp, the commander said, I'm your shepherd. You're not going to lack for anything. We get in the enemy territory. Oh, you're going to forever be broke. Do you see what I'm saying? We, we're coming into a surety. Now, now, the scripture calls it a friend. Man, see, we treat these people like they're our friends, but they are not our friends. All right, here we go. So then verse four and five says, don't give any sleep to thy eyes, nor slumber to thy eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter. See, this is what I'm saying about we're not ready. The hunter is telling us, don't listen to people that that lady be. She's doing the most. Things are going well. Remember, you're the head and not the tail. Remember, you're Abraham's seed. You don't have to stock up. Pastor talked about this today. You don't need any extra beans and rice. You don't need any water. These people just be just doing too much. They just doomsdayers. Let me tell you, we're going by what the scripture said. And then they it, listen, you already, and I'm guilty of it. Praise God, I'm free. Hallelujah, I'm free. But listen. These agreements we've come into, break them in the name of Jesus. These agreements that we've come into with the enemy and the enemy's representatives, break them in the name of Jesus. Look at what it says. Don't go to sleep until you're free. Don't, don't get comfortable. Don't slumber. Can y'all go to the scripture with me? Lower your voice. Lower your voice. Lower your voice. Proverbs chapter 6. Do not Verse four, give sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids, because you got to get yourself delivered. Stop going to church and you're still bound. Stop going to the prayer service and you're still bound. Somebody in that church or in that prayer service will work with you until you get set free. But look here, get yourself free. Deliver yourself from the row, as a roe from the hand of the hunter, as a deer from the hand of the hunter, as a bird from the hand of the fowler. The fowler is the one that catches the birds. Listen, y'all. Get your mind together. Confess the word of God. Confess means you come in into agreement with your mouth. We are in enemy territory. And people of God, God is sending his word by so many of his servants telling us to get ready, telling us to live soberly. That's you, me, all of us, y'all. This Paul said, I'm praying that you will know how much God loves you. Every time the word of God comes forth and says, or goes forth and says, repent, be encouraged, be strengthened, let go, forgive, pray, fast, stop spending so much, live simply, be grateful. All of those things is God saying, I love you. So I'm asking you on today. Number one, remember that God loves you. And the purpose of that love is to anchor us in him, to be strengthened for whatever he allows to come. Number two, watch your mouth. Stop coming into agreement with the father of lies and all of his imps. Don't do it. Number four, am I on four? You know I can't count. I do this every time. The next one is, don't rest until you know you're free. Whatever's keeping you back 
from being free, from experiencing the joy of the Lord, from God getting all the glory, maximum glory out of your life. Deliver yourself. And his name is Jesus. He came to set the captives free. Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, I'm struggling. Deliver me. We've been dealing about uh, rebellion and defiance in Sunday school for three weeks. But those Sunday school lessons was Jesus saying, I love you and I love you so much. I want you to know what's between us. I want to tell you about this rebellion that I see in you. I want to tell you about this defiance I see in you. You know what's the other one he's been dealing with us about? Anger. Anger that comes along with unforgiveness. That also comes along with depression and oppression. A lot of times we are depressed because we're holding on. We're angry. We think we've forgiven when in fact we have not. All right, I'm done. Can I ask you to read those scriptures in Ephesians chapter 3? Just read the whole chapter. And read Proverbs chapter 6. Just read the whole chapter. It'll be good for you. And remember, as a believer, we are living outside the water. We are in enemy territory. If you are an unbeliever, I want to encourage you to hear what I'm saying. That God so loved the world. That he gave his only son. That whosoever. That whosoever is you and it's me. It's whosoever. It doesn't matter what you've done. None of our sins cancel us out from being saved. Jesus wants you. He died for you. And then once you come to Christ. Watch what you say. Confess what he said. Ask God to send you to a strong Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. And then don't rest until your soul is free. Because, you know, when we get saved, our spirit comes alive. But our soul, those emotions, those wounds of all of the stuff of this world, we still got to wrestle with that when we come to Jesus. But Jesus, he Set the captives free. Um, 1 John 3 and 8 said, Satan has sinned from the beginning. And for that reason, Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan so that the works of Satan have been destroyed. We are birds that have been set free out of the cage. We are the rose or the deer that have escaped the, the clamp of the hunter's um, snare. So I love you. Thank you so much. For sharing with me. Remember, because we are living outside the wire in enemy territory, we have got to watch our confessions. We've got to watch what we say. Make sure it lines up with this God who loves us so much. Not what man said. I don't care who they were. Make sure it lines up with the God who loves us. Lord, I thank you for this time, and I thank you for everyone that's going to listen to this. God, I pray that I said what you wanted me to say, and I pray that your anointing will be on this time, God, and that someone will be saved and delivered and healed and strengthened in the name of Jesus. Help us to be sensitive, God, to your wooings and your exhortations to prepare for the trouble that's coming. Help us to wake up and not be lazy and not be drunk by the things of the world. Forgive us, God, for not saying what you're saying. Sanctify our mouths and our hearts that we'll bless you and glorify you. In your matchless name, Jesus, amen. Again, this is Lady B. Thank you so much for this time that you've shared with me. I pray that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And if you are in the area, and even if you're not, we would love for you to come and be with us at our prayer event 20, um, 2021. It will be next week, December. December's here. December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th at 1452 Auburn Road in the city of Decula, Georgia. It will be held at Trinity Life Church on Thursday and Friday, where the pastor is David S. Brunson Sr. Again, thank you so much 
for sharing with me. I love you. I'm praying for you. I am believing God for you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.